All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Real Talk. This is episode number nine. Very happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody out there. I hope everybody had a wonderful, fantastic St. Patrick's Day. Uh, let's see here. Got a lot of really great questions already popping up in the feed today. Uh, so we will definitely get to those. So welcome in, everybody. So happy that y'all could be here today. All right. Uh, let's see. Looks like we are having some issues streaming over onto Facebook. So uh, it looks like uh, we're just going to be streaming on uh, YouTube today. So hopefully all those Facebook people can come over uh, onto YouTube. Speaking of Facebook, before we do dive into our show, I just want to um, make a really quick uh, kind of a PSA here, uh, especially about Facebook and TikTok. Uh, guys, we are not giving anything away. We do not have other random accounts or anything like that. So you know, there, unfortunately with Facebook and TikTok, especially it's, it's a rampant thing. They're everywhere. Uh, there's all kinds of scam pages popping up all the time. So if you happen to see one of those, just know that it is not us. Uh, we are not giving anything away, nor will we ever comment that you've won anything, uh, whatsoever. Um, so anyway, uh, that's really the only PSA I had for today. Uh, so let's dive in and get started because we already have some really great questions lined up in here in the queue already. Uh, we're going to start out with Simon here. Uh, Simon says, I saw a new machine in the high limit room today, a triple play $10 Denom, uh, appears to have no multipliers, but also appeared to be a low volatile machine. Is that correct? So triple play is actually a pretty old game. Um, it's a really old game actually, but they've brought it back in some new designs and some new cabinets. It's actually a pretty fun game to play. It really is Uh volatility. It's really not that bad. Um, you know, if you are saying a $10, $10 Denom, um, obviously you want to have a little bit of a bigger bankroll to play that game. Uh, if you are going to play it at that $10 Denom level, but as for volatility, as long as you've got a good bankroll to go with it, it's really not that bad. And it is a really fun game. And good evening to you, Alan. And yes, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody out there. Uh, do the tips you suggest apply to Canadian casinos or only casinos in America? So this one, uh, here, here's the thing. So obviously we're a U.S.-based channel. All my experience has been here in the U.S., but the tips and strategies that we do give here on this channel are pretty much based on two main things. And that's going to be your budget, personal control of your budget, and also what machines and what bet amounts you are picking for that budget. That is something that you can do anywhere. doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you can control yourself, then you can pretty much implement that regardless of where the casino is at. Um, the other thing that's nice about um, volatility, obviously we always talk about volatility here, um, is that volatility, you know, that is not a setting. It is not anything that's different. That is the design of the game itself. So however that game is designed, it's going to perform regardless of what other settings are on it, regardless of RTPs or anything like that. So yes, absolutely. You can 100% use these tips up there in Canada. Andrea, welcome to the show here. A question you may not want to answer, but I am curious. Hey, it's okay. You guys can ask any question you would like. Uh, how do slot influencers afford to keep playing slots as uh, slot playing is a losing proposition? So this is a good, good question here. Um, most slot influencers, um, that are out there on YouTube, especially the bigger channels. So you look at, um, a lot of the bigger channels or the channels that bet really high or, you know, high limit channels. Uh, these are people that they've had good jobs prior, or they currently do have great jobs as well. Um, you know, this is also another reason why I always stress, you know, watch the channels for the entertainment. Absolutely. You know, support the creators, um, you know, give them those likes, give them those subscribes support them in any way that you guys can, because they do work very hard at the channel, but just never try to emulate them because a lot of times, you know, their bankroll is very different. It's a lot higher of a bankroll, uh, than the average person, uh, than the average person has. And a lot of these people, you know, they come from money or they've had a lot of money in the past and they can afford to do that. You know, the channel was kind of secondary to them. So always do just keep that in mind anytime that, uh, you're watching slot creators out there, but very good question. And you guys are free to ask any question that you'd like. Reno low, uh, low roller. Welcome to the show. Uh, does the random number generator stop or pause during gameplay after you press the button or immediately start again, uh, during gameplay and during bonuses? So this, uh, this is actually a pretty good question. You guys have already lined up a lot of really great questions tonight. 
So the random number generator is always running. The only time that the random number generator ever stops is the second that you hit that spin button or pull the handle, anything to get those reels spinning. That is what is going to pause the random number generator just for that little blip. Excuse me. All it's going to do is pause for a second to generate the stop. That's it. Um, other than that, it continues to roll. It continues to keep going. So there's no like extended pause or anything like that coming from the random number generator. But very good question. CG Motorsports. Uh, why do certain people actually believe that casinos can rig machines? Uh, don't they know that they could get shut down for that? Um, you know, it's a long time myth. That's something that we, you know, obviously we battle because the, the casino industry is full of myths. It has been forever, but the biggest thing, the biggest thing is, I, I think it's a lack of understanding. Um, slot machines don't need to be rigged. They don't. Um, there, there's also a lot of safeguards in place to prevent any kind of nefarious activity from happening. But the biggest thing is just the math of how the slot machine is designed to play out. You know, a lot of people have this notion that the machines are, the casino is going to tighten the machine or loosen the machine or, you know, put a better paying machine. They don't need to do any of that. The machine is always going to make them money. You know, if, if I were to come to you and say, hey, all you have to do is set this device out on your floor and you're going to make, you know, the entire time the device is, you know, in operation by the end of whenever you decide to remove the device with a 90% guarantee, you'll retain 10%. You wouldn't need to do anything from that. So, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's just a lack of understanding from a lot of times, uh, you know, those myths that are out there and everything, but no casinos don't need to rig a machine. They don't. That's, that's a giant misunderstanding about that. And a follow-up question from me, not sure if you would know this, but how often does the pinball bonus happen? Uh, so this, we actually do know, um, the average pinball bonus, uh, the frequency of it is one in 64 is the average. Now that is just an average. It is never a guarantee that it is going to happen within 64 spins, but that is just the mathematical average. You could go two, 300 spins and not get a pinball, or you could get five pinballs in a row. Uh, it's just the average. Uh, Rosemary, welcome to the show. Uh, will a hundred dollars be enough to play on Mustang money too? Good question. So it would really come down to and depend on what denomination you're playing. Uh, it does come in a 25 cent denomination. Um, I would not really recommend doing a dollar version. Um, you know, even at a $5 bet, just simply because that is really kind of pushing it. I mean, you're only getting 20 spins out of the game at that point, unless you had other money set aside uh, that you could come back on that. I would really wouldn't recommend doing a hundred dollars at, at the dollar level. Uh, but if it's a 25 cent denom level, then that should be pretty, um, that should be pretty okay. Pretty decent. All right. We already got 300 and uh, about 324 of you guys in here. Really appreciate each and every one of you. Please be sure to hit that like button. Like uh, Vegas girl slots vlog says, thank you very much for that. All right, let's see. CSX says, uh, you once did a video slash interview with a game designer. I forgot the game. He said that he isn't allowed to play the game, his own games uh, that he worked on or designed. Why is that? Uh, is it that the designers know the math? So, you know, this is kind of one, every company is going to be different. Um, and every company is going to have their own reasonings, kind of like how every casino is going to have their own reasonings for if they allow employees to play or if they don't allow employees to play. The biggest reason isn't that they know anything that is going to give them an advantage because the designers themselves know that, you know, there, there's nothing external that you can do to the game to give yourself any kind of advantage. Um, the biggest reason is just that how it looks to the public really that's a big thing uh, is kind of public image. You know, I mean, even for me, if, if I'm out in the field and I work on a game and then I come back and play that game and I just so happen to get lucky and hit the jackpot, it's going to look bad. So a lot of companies out there, uh, game makers, casinos are no different. Uh, they do have that safeguard in place just to say, Hey, you know what? you know, since you're in this department or since you worked on this project, we don't want you playing the game. It, it's mostly due to that. All right, let's see here. Daryl says, have you heard of us? Have you heard of a security rep tell you that you can't talk on your phone? 
when on a slot machine. This happened at Harris Valley River this weekend. You know, some casinos have really weird, strange rules. I, I will say that. Um, I know like some of the HHR facilities are really picky on that. Like they don't even want your phone out at all. Um, I have been to casinos. Uh, I've been to a casino that they don't let you wear a watch at the tables. Uh, you know, every casino has their weird little quirks about them. Uh, some of those date back to, you know, years and years and years ago, and they've just never changed the policy. But I mean, really it's, it's really casino specific. I don't know why they would have that rule. That seems kind of dumb to me, but yeah. Uh, Jonathan says, Hey, Brantley, just curious, are certain machines programmed to have a better return rate for one casino and a lower return rate for another casino? So this one, um, anytime we're talking about uh, rate of returns or anything like that, it's always going to be a jurisdiction choice. So whatever the jurisdiction is. So like, let's say for example, in Nevada, well, Nevada is actually one giant jurisdiction because the state, you know, the state has jurisdiction over all casinos. Um, but you go out to a place like Oklahoma that has multiple tribes, you could have one tribe that, you know, they order their machines with different settings, um, already in place. And another tribe that orders another, uh, you know, a different jurisdiction because they are set two separate jurisdictions. Uh, now Oklahoma is just an example. I don't know how they have their agreements with the actual state, but, um, it is always a jurisdiction choice. So if it's, if we're talking about two casinos in the same jurisdiction, um, no, the answer would be no. But if we're talking about two casinos that are in different jurisdictions, uh, it is possible. It could be, it could be a possibility. All right. And we do have so many questions cycling through here, guys. So if I'm missing questions, I apologize, but, uh, you guys are on fire tonight with those questions already. So really do appreciate each and every one of you being in here. Uh, Russ says, I live and play in Washington state where I believe they use a lottery type gaming system. You are correct on that. Uh, can you explain a little bit, uh, and is it better or worse than RNG games for the player? So really it's not any better or worse, so to speak. It's just creating a different form of randomness. So on a slot machine, you've got the random number generator. It's you're playing the machine. So the only two things in the equation, it's you versus the machine, but in a lottery based system, it's you versus the lottery pool, whatever, you know, is going on with the lottery um, however, their system is laid out with the lottery. You're playing not against the machine, but you're playing against the lottery pool. Um, so that's really the biggest difference. Um, is one better or worse? No, not really. Uh, slot machines, you know, the nice thing about it with an actual slot machine is you can really look at the pay table and you can kind of make your determination there on if it's going to be a good game that fits for your budget. Uh, whereas on a lottery system, you can kind of do that, but you really have to rely less on the pay table and more on the amount that you're betting. So I hope that helps to answer, uh, answer your question a little bit. Gambling granny is in here. Welcome to the show. Gambling granny. Some casinos really do have strange rules and, uh, uh, not to let us creators film is crazy. Uh, they are missing out on some free advertising. No, I hear you on that. I've been to some casinos that are very, uh, open about it and other casinos that are just, you know, absolutely not. So <laughs> always ask for sure. Always ask. And a 999 super chat here from John. John, thank you very much. Really do appreciate that. Uh, if I'm playing with a hundred dollar budget on a machine, does it matter if I put the whole hundred in at once or put in smaller increments like $20 at a time? Uh, so thank you very much for your super chat. Um, in terms of the machine, in terms of the machine, there's going to be no difference. The machine is going to treat all credits the same, whether it's uh, 20, uh, whether it's a hundred, whether it's little bits at a time, you can stick all ones in it. It's going to treat it exactly the same. Um, the only time that I would recommend breaking it down is, uh, you know, you can do kind of a personal budget challenge with yourself. Um, I've done this before where I've, you know, I've had a hundred dollars and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to break this down to twenties and I'll put in a 20 at a time and see like, if I double it to 40, I'll cash it out, put another 20 in. If I double that to 40, I'll cash it out, put another, you know, it's kind of a fun little challenge that you can do, but there's not any, um, there's nothing like different about the machines or anything like that. So it's going to treat all credits the same. Um, but if you want to do something like budget related for that reason, then that's a good reason to break it down. But thank you very much for, um, for that really do appreciate it. 
All right. If uh, slots run off RNG, why during slot tournaments do people hit so many jackpots? So, you know, this, this is a question that comes up a lot. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, we've, we've kind of explained a little bit how slot tournaments work, but I think still a lot of people get confused by it. Sorry guys. Um, here's the thing with slot tournaments, the slot tournament mode that the machine has on it. Not all machines have a tournament mode. It is a separate program. It is entirely separate. So when a slot machine is in tournament mode, it's playing for fun. It's playing for points. It's playing for everything except for money. The machine does not even recognize money whatsoever when it's in tournament mode. Um, you cannot cross the two. The two do not communicate with each other. It's not, you know, normal mode versus tournament mode. They don't talk. Um, it pulls from a different pay table. It pulls from a much, much smaller, smaller pay table to give people those big wins and stuff that are exciting and thrilling that you want to see in a slot tournament. Um, that does not happen in regular gameplay mode, uh, by any means, but you know, it's a lot, a lot of people don't know that those are very different programs that run on slots, but that's a very good question. Appreciate that. I'm going to try to get caught up on some of these, uh, some of these questions here. Um, a little bit because I know I've missed quite a few. Like I said, you guys are really rocking it with the, with the questions tonight. I'm just getting flooded with questions over here. Steven says, what is the most common malfunction of a slot machine? Most common malfunction of a slot machine. I mean, mostly it's going to be like paper jams or real tilts. Those are going to be really the most common, uh, which are really you know, simple, easy fixes. Um, they don't require much. That's going to be the most common, um, common issues that slot machines have. They're really built pretty solid. They don't really have that many issues. Uh, I mean, other than like maybe a video card goes bad or something like that, like more technical sense, but those are going to be really the most common. 1777 super chat from Patrick. Thank you so much for that. Really do appreciate it. Super chats and super stickers are really helpful to the channel. So I really do appreciate you guys for that. Uh, not sure if this was answered, but on a $1,500 budget, would you suggest playing a higher DNOM and a lower credit bet or a lower DNOM with max bet? Thank you. Love your channel. Well, thank you very much, Patrick. I appreciate it. Um, this one I'm going to have to say is going to have to be game specific. So Really, it depends. So if, uh, like, for example, if I was to play pinball, I would want to play max bet. So I get the most out of that pinball bonus. But if I was to play a game, say, like Mystery of the Lamp, well, Mystery of the Lamp, if you read the game rules of Mystery of the Lamp, granted, it is a very small chance, but it is still a chance nonetheless. If you do read the rules of Mystery of the Lamp, it will tell you that the denomination itself is what matters for getting the grand. Um, and then the increment of the bet matters for getting all of the other progressives. So if I were to play a game like that, I would probably go for the highest denom with the lowest bet. So it's really going to be game specific on that one. Um, always check, check your game rules, no matter what, make sure that you're not missing out on something. $1,500 is a pretty workable budget. Um, I would probably stick with something, probably no more than 15, uh, 15, $20 a spin at most, regardless of what you pick. Uh, but that is a pretty workable budget. So thank you very much for that. I hope that answers your question. I know it's kind of generic, but it really does depend on the game itself. Marco says electronic blackjack. Can they stop you from winning? No, they cannot. Um, actually, you know, here's the, here's the funny thing, electronic table games. So, you know, me as a technician and doing the work that I do and being out in the field, I will say this. Um, electronic table games are one of the few that, um, after working with them and knowing more about them and all of that, I actually prefer the electronic version now, um, as opposed to the regular tables. Now I always love the interaction that you get with the regular tables of, you know, the camaraderie of other players and having the dealer there and stuff like that. But the electronic tables, they truly do act the exact same way. So blackjack, for example, you know, there's not added cards or anything. It is based on a normal, you know, six deck shoe or whatever uh, that table happens to be. Look in the game rules for that. But it's based on a normal six deck shoe. Works exactly like regular blackjack. The only thing that they do is um, if they want to adjust, you know, payback percentage, so to speak, 
uh, they would adjust what you're allowed to do in the game. So they don't actually alter any kind of cards or shuffling or anything like that. The cards are still dealt at random. They just alter what you're allowed to do. So like you might not be able to split aces. You might not be able to double down, stuff like that. But very good question. CB Red 499 Super Chat. Thank you very much. Uh, estimated value of a Pinball S Plus coin operated 25 cent three credits. Any tips on maintenance? Probably need to change battery now. Uh, no coin op sucks. Um, so estimated value of that probably going to be pretty high. And if you want to sell it, send me a message because I will I will probably purchase it from you. Um, but yeah, it's probably uh, probably pretty high. Uh, for the pinball S plus, just cause those are really, really difficult to come by tips on maintenance. Um, obviously battery is going to be the biggest thing, uh, replacing the battery, which on the, on the S plus is a little more in depth than, you know, say like an S 2000 or anything like that. Um, but, uh, maintenance on it, it's going to be relatively simple. Um, your coin hoppers and all of that, they probably are still in good shape. At least I would hope that they are. Uh, but no battery is probably going to be the biggest thing. So thank you very much for that super chat. Really do appreciate it. All right. Can you please one day do a video on how to win a jackpot starting with a 25 cent denom using your jackpot method? Absolutely. You know, we've done a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of build up videos in the video library already. Um, so be sure uh, if you haven't had a chance to really go through the video library, be sure to check those out. Cause we have done quite a few, uh, different buildups on that. But if you're wanting to see 25 cent denom in particular, that is something that we could do. Uh, absolutely. D says, uh, why when playing max on machines, it will never give a bonus until I get to the very end of my money, uh, and dropping down to a minimum bet. And I mean, I put hundreds of dollars in it. So, I mean, this is always something that's possible with any slot. I, I think as slot players, we've all experienced this at some point. Um, it's not, you know, the machine itself does not account in for, you know, oh, this person is down to their last bit. Let's give them a bonus. Uh, the machine doesn't do that. There's nothing in the programming that does that. Um, you just got, you know, unlucky or, hey, if you got a bonus at the very last minute, then, you know, lucky, uh, so to speak. Um, but no, there's nothing in the machine's programming or anything that would um, that would do that. Uh, it just it happens sometimes. Uh, and we we it's hard to forget it when it does happen. Uh, cause we've all had that happen. Brian says, what's your favorite, uh, high variance game and what? Hmm. So if I was going to play a high volatile game, there's actually a couple that I do really like. I like the design of the game. I like the math behind the game. I think that they've done a great job. Um, mystery of the lamp probably is, is the number one. It is, it is a very high volatile game. Uh, it is, but you know, it's one game that the bonuses can have really, really good potential, much better potential than say like a dragon link or a lightning link or anything like that. The game is exciting. I really like it. Um, another one, I really like the new Frankenstein game. I think they did a great job with that props to light and wonder, um, for that one, but let, probably Frankenstein and mystery of the lamp would be my two. Uh, I started my casino career as a slot tech. Much love and respect to all the techs out there. Yes, thank you very much for that. Really do appreciate it. You know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of guys out there that are you know they're doing the job. They're doing a great job, and you know they're out there working you know working in the field. And you know, mad respect to them. Absolutely. All right, let's see here. Vegas Girl Slots Vlog. Do those electronic craps game with the big dice, uh, screaming, press the button. Uh, play close to uh, table craps odds. So they actually do. Um, that is one machine that I have worked on in the past. Um, I still work on them uh, a little bit and they do act exactly like regular craps. So the dice, whenever, you know, pops the dice up or throws the dice or whatever, that part is a hundred percent random. Um, there's no control aspect to that. It does not even that system. It does not even read the dice until the dice have landed, uh, have landed. So uh, there's nothing nefarious going on with that. So it will act exactly like a regular uh, regular game of craps. Now, uh, in terms of the odds, um, in terms of the odds, uh, that, you know, that can be adjusted for what each thing pays. So, you know, like, let's say if they decide that they want to, you know, lower, you know, lower the odds on the, you know, on the back bets or anything like that, they can do that, uh, but they can't alter anything with the dice itself. <clears throat> 
499 super sticker from Jennifer. Jennifer, thank you very much. Really do appreciate it. And Jennifer asks, uh, going to Vegas again in two weeks, uh, where do you think is the best uh, bet uh, place to play? So, um, you know, here's the nice thing about Vegas. Um, now, me personally, I'm not a huge fan of Vegas. I'm really not. Um, but the nice thing about Vegas is you have so many opportunities, so many things out there. Um, the casinos really, once you've been in one, you've kind of been in them all. Um if you like the really, really old school stuff, uh, downtown circus, uh, circus circus actually just opened up, um, the new slots of fun area and they actually do have coin operated, um, top dollar pinball stuff like that. So if you want that nostalgia, um, that place is relatively, uh, it's, it's been totally revamped. They just did like a grand reopening, um, a couple of weeks ago. I would highly recommend anybody. If you're going out to Vegas, go back, uh, and check out that new slots of fun area in, um, in circus circus. Uh, that is on my list for places to check out next time I'm there. And, um, other than that on the strip, I would say Bellagio, New York, New York, uh, MGM grand also has the cherries Jubilee. They're the only place that has the cherries Jubilee. Um, so there's a ton there, there really is a ton out there. Uh, what is the tripod you use when filming? I actually just got a, uh, just got a new one. Um, but there's, um, usually, uh, the one that I was using previously was just something that I picked up off of Amazon, a really quick, uh, little one. Uh, this new one I got is a little more heavy duty. It's like carbon fiber. It's pretty, pretty large actually, but it has a quick release. So I can have the cage, um, that has my phone on it. And then I can just pop the cage off and, do that. Uh, the brand, I'm not sure. I would have to look that up because again, I just got a new one. So I'm not sure about that. Uh, Jeffrey says, would you say it's not smart to play a machine after it pays out a jackpot or hand pay? Not at all. Uh, every single spin is going to have the exact same chances as the previous spin. Um, you know, machines don't get hot or cold or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about that. That's kind of one of those um, one of those old, uh, old myths out there. Um, that's also one of the other reasons why a lot of times casinos request that you, if you do get a jackpot that you spin it off because, uh, you know, there, there's all these myths out there of people are nervous to play a machine that just paid out when they shouldn't be. So the casino would like you to spin it off. So it doesn't detract people from playing it. Uh, so it doesn't detract people from playing it, but no, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Jeff says, can you tip a slot tech? You absolutely can. Uh, most casinos, you absolutely can. All right, let's see here. Thoughts on Bally changing their name to Scientific Games and then Delight and Wonder. I personally miss Bally, uh, most nostalgic from the old arcade days. Um, you know, the slot, the slot industry itself has a ton of, you know, buy, sell, buy, sell, merge, merge. It's, it's worse than the cell phone industry. Um, when it comes to that. So, I mean, my thoughts on it, it's just kind of the way of, you know, the way of the industry and how it works. Um, I, they do still kind of retain the name Bally and some of the operations that they do, uh, some of the cabinets that they come out with still have the Bally name on it, uh, which is kind of nice. But uh, other than that, I really don't have many thoughts on it other than that's, it's, it's a pretty normal thing. Uh, is there a listing that lists games by volatility for land-based casinos? Unfortunately, there's not, but what you can do is you can always check, um, the slot manufacturers website. A lot of slot manufacturers have started listing the volatility on their website for their games, which is nice. I know, um, every just kind of redid their website a little bit and they've got, you know, the volatility listed, um, light and wonder does it on some, I know IGT does it on some of them. Uh, so you can always check the game makers website, but always remember too, when it comes to volatility, the biggest thing to keep in mind is, uh, first of all, volatility always goes hand in hand with your budget because your budget is going to play a big part in it. If you have a small budget, a game's going to feel a lot more volatile because you're not getting the full experience out of the game. So that's part number one. Part number two is if you ever are wondering about the volatility of a game, there is a really easy calculation to do. And you can do this with any slot machine, any game at all. You look at the max bet amount or the bet amount that you're going to play. Okay. 
So uh, let's just look at, we'll take Cherry's Jubilee, for example, because that's an easy one. Cherry's Jubilee, you've got a $3 max bet. And the highest amount that you can earn is that progressive. And that progressive is $1,000. Well, the gap between $3 and $1,000, that's actually not a lot. That's, that's a pretty reasonable gap. But if you were to go over to a game that's, you know, also a $3 bet, but the top line payout is like $50,000, well, that's a pretty big jump. The bigger that gap gets, that tells you everything that you need to know about the volatility. So that's an easy, quick way, um, quick way to do it. But always, always, always remember volatility does go in tandem with your budget. All right. It's my favorite casino in Vegas. Um, I would have to say to stay at my favorite casino is going to be Aria. I usually always stay at the Aria when I'm down there. It's centralized. Um, it's easy to walk in between the casinos. Park MGM is also really good, but I would say my favorite is probably Aria. Uh, Rick says, I believe the machines do get cold uh, spins after spins and no return. You know, that's just the nature of randomness, you know, a machine can feel cold. It can feel hot, but there's no programmable reason for it to do that. Um, you always have to remember that you're only getting a very small snippet of a very, very large picture. Um, so, you know, you might be spending and spending and spending. You could even be spending a couple hundred spins and not get anything, but a couple hundred spins is really nothing in comparison to the millions and millions and millions of spins that a slot machine goes through. So, um, always just keep that in mind. Um, there's no programmable reason for slots to get hot or cold. Um, you know, nobody's doubting that it doesn't feel like it sometimes I, as gamblers. I think we've all felt that, but there's no, nothing in the programming that makes a slot machine do that. $5 here from Craig. Craig, thank you so much. Really do appreciate it. Uh, how do I choose a class two machine? What denom should I do? Uh, and why do I never see red screens? Um, is volatility a thing? So that's, that's a very loaded question here, Craig. Um, you know, to start, uh, let's start with what denom should you do? Um, anytime we're talking about bets or denoms, regardless of what game it is, whether it's slots, bingo, VLT, anything, always choose what is going to fit your budget the best. That's going to be main key for that. Um, how do you choose a class two machine? This is where it kind of gets a little difficult because you're not playing against the machine. You're playing against the bingo game in the back and you have no idea how big that bingo game is. Uh, there could be, um, you know, there, it could be one bingo server. It could be, you know, several bingo servers it going on at once. So it's really, really difficult to really gauge, um, anything class two related. I always recommend focus way more on your bankroll and personal management of that rather than the machine. Um, there is volatility. There's volatility in, in everything in life, but it's just, it's really, really difficult to tell, uh, in a class two setting. So, um, that that's really about all the advice that I can give on that. Um, like I said, it's, it's class two gets a little different, but, uh, thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate it. Um, and Kevin, great for mentioning this, Kevin. Thank you so much. Um, we do have a free to use chat forum that you guys can use anytime on our website. It is a hundred percent free. And we have so many people on there from all across the country and the world. Um, that are really, really good and really knowledgeable about, about slots, uh, start a thread about it. Um, this would be a great question to ask in that, uh, in that chat forum. Uh, we have a chat forum just for class two, uh, class two machines. So this would actually be a great question to ask because we do have a lot of class two players out there and they could give, uh, give their insight on it. And twenty dollars super chat here. Thank you very much. Really do appreciate that. Uh, I've been watching your videos for a couple of days now, and I'm hooked. Answered all my questions I've had about myths. Great, sensible advice. Well, thank you very much, and welcome to the channel. Appreciate you being here. Really do appreciate it. <clears throat> all right, let's see. Trace says, uh, in each spin of a hold and spend bonus. Uh, considered a random event or is the payout predetermined at the start of the bonus? So each of those are going to be, uh, they're each going to be random events. So in those hold and spin features, you know, the dragon link, lightning link, all of that stuff, uh, nothing is predetermined on that. So each of those spins is going to be random and independent. However, the only thing I will say about this, and this is something that 
not a lot of people realize. So, you know, you say, we'll just take Dragon Dragon Cash, for example. You know, it's a five reel game. You've got five reels. And then you land the six orbs and you go into this hold and spin feature. And now you've got, you know, you've got to collect 15 orbs. Well, each of those individual windows is essentially now its own separate reel. So each of those windows is going to act independently. So now you've just gone from a five reel game to a, essentially a 15 reel game. Uh, it is very difficult to collect all 15 of those orbs. So uh, that's one thing that I will say about the uh, about those games. I'm not a huge fan of the hold and spin games. Um, that's why I like, I really, really like how they did Mystery of the Lamp because at least when you get the hold and spin, there's other features in there as well. You know, you can get that double up gem, you can get the ignite feature, you can get all of these other features. Um, so I like that. It kind of makes the game a little more exciting. Um, but typically I don't recommend those hold and spin style games. Is double diamond five line better than a triple uh, diamond five line? Good question. So in terms of the math and in terms of volatility, yes, it would be. Um, but the benefit, so, I mean, each game is going to have its give and take, right? So we look at the difference. So if we have a five line, double diamond and a five line, triple diamond, the five line, triple diamond, it is going to be harder to line up all three of those triples. However, at least the triples pay you something. Whereas on double diamond, if you j just get one double diamond, it doesn't pay you anything. So it's kind of a, a give and take there. Um, but in terms of which one is overall better um, in terms of the math, uh, it would be the regular double diamond five line. And thank you very much for that, Julius. Really do appreciate it. $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, Reno Low Roller, how can I send you an email? I'd like to have you part of a collaboration video with myself and a few other YouTube content creators. You can always send me an email. Um, you can use the, either the contact form on the website. Um, that's probably the best. So if you just go to our website, which is ropethejackpot.com, use the contact form, you can do that. Um, just go uh, click on contact us and uh, shoot me over an email that way. Candace says, how can you tell who make, uh, who the makers of the machine are? Good question. So it'll typically be somewhere on the cabinet. If not, if not on the cabinet, it's usually the last page of the game rules. Um, if you have a particular game in mind, you can always leave that, uh, leave that in the comments, drop a comment of a particular game, and I can tell you who makes it. Um, but most of the time, if you're just out and about at the casino and you're curious, it'll either be on the side of the machine or on the belly door of the machine, um, and then also in the game rules as well. Brandon says, are the bonus rounds picking three uh, matching mini major uh, and grand predetermined? I feel like no matter what I choose, it's, pre de it's determined to get the bonus. So yes, those are actually predetermined. Um, and when we are talking about those, um, when we're talking about those, the back end pay table of the game is heavily weighted towards the smaller options. You know, you're not going to have an equal shot to get everything. Um, you know, you might only be picking to match three coins out of like, let's say if there's, uh, you know, I'm just tossing a number out there. Let's say there's 15 coins on the screen and you have to pick to match three. Well, on the back end virtual pay table, there could be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of coins. And most of those are going to be minis and minis and minors. Um, there's only going to be a select few where you can possibly match the grand, but it is a hundred percent predetermined when you go into that the machine already knows what it's going to give you. Um, so you can, you know, swipe the screen, you can just hit the button, whatever, uh, it's going to give you what it's going to give you. Cheap slots, cheap gambling. Any chance we could get you to do a 15 Buffalo head challenge on Buffalo gold, man, you know, Buffalo can be a fun game, but that game is extremely difficult. I would put Buffalo and I would put Buffalo almost in the same category as Huff and more Uh, it's a really, really difficult difficult game to play. Uh, definitely am not one to chase 15 Buffalo heads. I really, really would not want to do that. Maybe one day if I have a really big extra bankroll and I'm going out there, I might do it. Um, but definitely not something I'm going to do, uh, with my normal budget that I go with to the casino. Adam says, Hey Brantley, uh, when you go to the HHR establishments in your area, uh, have you found any Ainsworth machines? If so, which ones have you played? Yes, we do have Ainsworth machines. Um, none of them have must hit by progressives though. Uh, and that's kind of a commonplace thing that you'll see with the HHR games. Um, I can't re really remember all of the, um, all of the new titles, uh, or all of the titles that are out there. I know that they just brought their, uh, their newest one, the Sanbao, 
uh, pandas. Uh, they actually do have that one in the HHR configuration. We do have those. Um, so I was able to check out some of those, but really, um, a lot of them, I mean, they're, I have seen Eagle bucks, um, some other stuff like that, uh, but they are not must hit buys, um, because those are not available in the HHR configuration. All right. Sorry guys, we got a lot of questions backing up here. So trying to get to as many as I can. And Hey, this is also a good reminder. If I'm not able to get to your question, please do. Uh, visit our website. I put that up on the screen here, ropethejackpot.com forward slash chat. It's a hundred percent free to use. Um, I know we have a couple of other slot channels in here that are watching right now. Uh, for those of you that have slot channels, we also do have, um, we have a separate forum on there on the chat forum, uh, where you guys, uh, you guys are free to advertise your channel on there. Uh, and you are free to plug your channel on there. So if that's something that you guys want to do, you can also do that. And um, even if you are a slot channel, you can submit for verification and we can get you a, a check mark on there. So uh, go over, set up a set up a profile and it's 100% free to chat on there and all of that. So if I miss your question, be sure to check that out. All right, let's see here. Who makes Huff and Puff? Do you recommend playing this game in what denomination? So um, three-part question here. Who makes it? It's going to be Light and Wonder. Uh, Light and Wonder is the manufacturer of all the Huff and Puff line. Uh, do you recommend playing the game? No, not really. Not unless you have a very substantial bankroll to do it. Um, you know, if you if you go on online or on YouTube and you see people playing Huff and Puff, you know, nobody is denying that it is a very fun game. Um, I've had, you know, I've had really fun times on it. You know, I've seen people play it and it seems like a really fun bonus, but that is one game that can absolutely rake you over the coals when it comes to your bankroll. Um, you might see videos out there of people playing this game and they're putting thousands and thousands and thousands through it. And in the end, if you do the math, it's, they either come out down or break even. So, um, not a game that I recommend. And as for denomination, uh, anytime we're talking about denomination, it's always going to be personal to whatever your budget is that you're playing with. So I hope that helps to answer your questions there. Thank you, Ashley. I would like to know if crystal star 25 cents is a high volatile game. Would you recommend this game? It's actually not that bad. So that's one, uh, that is one that's made by every, um, Every's actually done a really good job with their games lately. Um, I would put it more in the middle, middle of the road category. Uh, 25 cent denom. It's actually pretty good. The only thing I would caution on is really watch your bets, uh, what that machine does. Um, because some of them, it might be a nine credit bet. Some, it might be an 18 credit bet. And I've seen some that are higher. So always check that first to make sure what the max bet actually is before you hit that max bet button. All right. Uh, Donald says, what is an HHR game? Good question, Donald. So we do have some videos. Um, if you are wondering about HHR, uh, did quite a few videos on, um, uh, about it. And then also some play, uh, on the new pinball HHR, but essentially it stands for historic horse racing. It's not you versus the game, but rather you're playing with a prize pool against other players. Uh, and it is pulling data from historic horse racing. So, uh, it actually has some really, really great potential. Um, and you really can win a lot of money off of it. Uh, but just don't go too crazy with it. All right. Have you played the new Huff and even more Puff game yet? I have not. I have not. So, um, you know, I know we've, we've kind of talked about this a little bit in the past, but, um, I try to limit my casino trips to one trip a month. So I normally only go to the casino about once a month, maybe twice a month. Um, so I don't go constantly to the casino. Um, I feel like if you are going to the casino constantly, you're going to lose a lot more money and I do not want to lose a lot more money. So I limit my time going to the casino. So I actually have not been to a casino that has had it yet, um, but I'm sure I will soon. And uh, I might be able to play it for you guys. It's going to be a really, really high volatile game. It's probably not going to be a good video. It's probably not going to be a winning video, but you never know, right? All right. Speaking of Vegas, is it true that off strip casinos are usually looser because locals go to play there? Uh, you know, I mean, is there truth to it? I guess if you were to sit and do the math, yes. But again, you always have to remember what that RTP actually is. 
Um, it's the biggest thing that's misunderstood by players. Everybody's always wanting to know RTP and return and all of that, but it really has nothing to do with you, the player, because it's an aggregate total of everybody that will ever put that, you know, touch that machine. So for example, you know, you could go to a casino that's a local casino that's supposed to be the loosest casino in Vegas and, you know, you could lose your ass and then you can go to the strip to, you know, one of the big casinos on the strip and you could win the biggest jackpot of your life. At the end of the day, it really comes down to that individual machine um, and not, you know, is it tight or loose or anything like that? Uh, Robert says, out of 10 trips to the casino, how many times do you break even or make a profit? So here, here's the thing, and this is this is a big thing that I try to teach everybody about slots. Most of the time you are going to lose on slots. It, that's just a fact of life. You're, you're going to have to learn to cope with that loss. But as long as you put safeguards in place and proper budgeting systems in place, you can walk away with at least some money. Very rarely do I leave the casino down. At least I will leave even. And the reason because of that is has nothing to do with the machines at all. The reason because of that is because you know, we're setting money aside. Like if I'm, if I'm doubling up, like when I win a jackpot, I'll put money aside. You know, I win a little bit more. I put money aside. If I build up a ticket, I put money aside. I'll put it in a lockbox. I'll do something. And sometimes I'm even pre pleasantly surprised. There have been times that I've come to the casino and I've been playing and I'll put a little bit in the lockbox and stuff, you know, just a little bit here and there. And then I'm down and it's like, oh, well I'm out of money. And then I come back home and I open my lockbox and there's two or $3,000 in there because I was just adding to it all night. So, I mean, you know, even though, even though I left with no money in hand, I still had the money in the lockbox. So that's why I say there is a lot of power. People actually do win more times than they think. It's just that they're not leaving with it. So putting those safeguards in place really will help you to start leaving with money. Um, but you do have to understand and always understand you're never going to win at slots hundred percent of the time. You are going to have losing days and losing sessions. Everybody is, even the biggest players are going to have those times where they just absolutely get wrecked and lose it. It's going to happen. Um, but at least if you have some kind of a safeguard in place, you can at least be bringing home some amount of money. So I, I hope that helps to kind of answer your question there. Craig, thank you so much for the $5 super chat, buddy. Really do appreciate it. If my local casino, uh, if my local class three casinos don't have any low volatility, 25, uh, cent five line machines, what should I play uh, for the buildup method, um, for the first time doubling. So for this, you know, it's actually pretty common, um, especially newer casinos. It's pretty common, but the thing is, is like you can find something that is as close to it as you can possibly get. Um, you know, try to find something maybe that's a little bit less of a denom. Maybe it's nine line, um, something like that. I don't know all the machines at your casino, so it's hard to make a, an exact, um, exact, uh, recommendation for that. Uh, but I always recommend, um, people just to try to find whatever you can. That's going to be the most similar to that. All right. How can you tell if a slot machine is bingo based? It'll have a bingo card on it. Um, it will, it will have a bingo card somewhere on the display. If you don't see a bingo card on the display, you can always look at the game rules and see what it says. If it's got a bunch of bingo patterns in there, then it's going to be a bingo, a bingo based machine. Any tips on cruise slots? I actually, we just did a video a couple weeks ago about cruise ship slots. So, uh, check out the video library. If you are interested about cruise ship slots, I, I, it was more than a couple weeks ago. I want to say it was about a month or so ago. Um, but for actual tips, if you are going on a cruise, uh, tips to handle those machines and handle your time at the casino. So be sure to check out that video. Uh, Billy asked, does picking the number of free spins make any difference? Um, no, not really. Uh, well, it has a difference when it comes to your bankroll. So when a machine gives you an option of, do you want less free spins with more ways to win? Or do you want more free spins with less ways to win? I always make that determination on where I'm at with my budget. Because essentially what you're doing is picking the volatility of the bonus. The more free spins is going to be the less volatile option. The least amount of free spins is going to be the more volatile option. Obviously, more volatile meaning, you know, you're going to have, you know, it's, it's either going to be a larger win or it's going to be a heavy loss. 
whereas the low volatile is going to be more consistent. So I always make that determination based on the budget that I'm at. So if I'm really, really high up in the game, um, you know, I might pick the low, the high volatile option um, for the less amount of free spins. Um, certain other games, like I know the quick hit explosion game, we did a video on that not too long ago. I always pick the option with more, uh, with the larger real set. Uh, the reason being is because you're collecting money off of every single one of those quick hits that fall. So obviously larger real set, I want more opportunities to try to get as many of those quick hit symbols as I possibly can. So it really depends on mainly your budget and where you're at with your budget. Uh, Paul says, uh, why are newer three real old slots, uh, not as much fun to play, uh, as the older one. Um, you know, I mean, I think that's really kind of a personal, uh, personal thing. I think they're fun. I, I think there are a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of folks out there that do think they're fun. Um, but you know, again, there's some people out there that just don't like those style of games and that's perfectly okay. I think that really comes down to personal preference with that. Karen says, why does it seem like uh, either the majority of the time the casino is hitting or isn't hitting? I also feel like if uh, they are hitting and it's before noon, they stop hitting at noon or vice versa. So this is a hundred percent psychology. Um, you know, I've, I've worked in several casino properties. I've, I've worked in the industry for a long time. And it's, it's funny because, uh, you know, I remember this day where I was working and a player came up and was like, I'd never hit anything. There's no jackpots going off or anything like that. And at the same time, the slot attendants are behind me running around with a whole stack of WTGs trying to get a whole bunch of payouts, you know, together for jackpots because they're backed up. It really is a hundred percent psychology because you cannot, as a single individual, you cannot see or observe the entire casino floor also casinos are a 24 seven operation. You're not there 24 seven. You don't know, you know, you can't really see the entire picture. So it's really more of a matter of you're getting a very, very small sample size and it's not a big enough sample size to make a judgment call off of that. So, um, that one, a hundred percent is going to be all in the mind. It's human psychology. Corey, thank you so much for the super sticker. Really do appreciate it. 1999. Absolutely appreciate it. Let's see here. Uh, Corey's uh, question is, uh, uh, if there's no such thing as a hot or cold slot, why uh, change or move when you're losing? Also, does changing the bet uh, denomination make any difference and why? So good question. Um, So yeah, there is no such thing as a hot or cold slot machine. Um, When it comes to the call of deciding if you want to move uh, that, that really comes down to if you're having fun, obviously if I'm sitting at a slot machine and I've just been losing and losing, and losing, I'm not having fun at that point. So that might be a big factor for me to move to another slot machine is that entertainment factor, you know, and that's a big thing with slot machines is that entertainment factor. Cause you've got to have that, um, does changing the bet, uh, or denomination make any difference? Um, it could possibly, but I don't recommend doing it unless your budget is appropriate for doing that. Um, when you change the denomination on a slot machine, each denomination is programmed separately and independently. So it's not going to rely on, you know, any other denomination. They don't talk to each other kind of thing. Um, you know, if I'm doing really, really bad on $5 level and I happen to have a bigger budget, I might switch to $10 level. Maybe I just wanted to start at the five, see if I could do anything. And, you know, maybe I decide to move up to the $10 level if my budget allowed for it. That's going to be the biggest thing. So I hope, uh, I hope that there, that that helps to, uh, answer your question there. Uh, Sue says her local casino closes at 2 AM. I know there are some casinos out there that do have a closing time. And I find that weird. I, cause I, any casino I've ever worked at and, or any casino I've ever been to does not close. So I think that's, uh, that's a little weird. And uh, Barbara says, I need to get me a lockbox. We actually do have them in our shop, guys. So if you are ever interested in a lockbox, um, there's actually uh, two different sizes of lockbox. You can either get it through this website, which is myslotguide.com. Uh, scroll down. We have a ton of resources there. Um, all of these resources are free as well, guys. You don't have to pay for any of these resources. Um, but there is a link on where you can get the lockboxes 
um, as well as in our uh, in our shop. You can actually go to our shop page, which is ropethejackpot.com forward slash shop. Um, in there, you can get lock boxes, you can get swag. Um, and also now uh, there's even a link on there if you've ever wanted a slot machine for your own home, like I have, you know, slot machines uh, here at my house. If you've ever been curious and wanting to get a slot machine for yourself, we now have resources on where to buy them on the shop page. So be sure to check that out. Uh, cheap slots and cheap gambling. What makes the Diamond RS cabinet better than the S3000? Good question. Um, from a technical aspect, I can't make a determination because I haven't worked on a Diamond RS cabinet yet. Um, the S3 is a pretty solid machine. Um, the Diamond RS is a really, really nice machine because it kind of is like that perfect fusion of the old school spinning reels. And then you've got the new, um, the new flashy features and stuff. It's a really versatile machine. Um, so it does have like that transparent overlay over the reels. So if you want to do something more interactive, like for example, like clovers and gold, you know, where the clovers can pop up on the screen and stuff like that. Um, the chili, uh, chili respin that one, uh, you know, the little peppers can pop up on the screen and stuff like that. Um, it's got some really cool features to it. Um, from a technical side, not sure how it is to work on the inside of them. I haven't touched one yet. Uh, they're still relatively new. Um, but all in all, it's they're a great cabinet. They really are. <clears throat> uh, Michelle says, uh, leave ATM card at home. My uh, bank max is 3000 per day. Uh, stay within my budget. Uh, predetermined, hey, you know what? That's the best thing that you can do. Leave that debit card at home if you can. <clears throat> Adam says, uh, the HHR place I go to in Kentucky does actually have uh, an Ainsworth machine with a progressive jackpot. Uh, hmm, interesting. Uh, I got the bonus round and uh, one symbol from hitting nearly $30,000 jackpot. That is crazy. So chances are, if it's got the progressive on it, it's not a must hit by progressive. It's probably a group progressive uh, to go along with the horse um, the horse racing aspect of it. Uh, most of those are going to have it. Um, the pinball, the new pinball that just came out, pinball double gold in the HHR con configuration also does have progressives on it, uh, but those are tied to the back end to the actual horse race of it <clears throat> og slots uh let's see speaking of the life of the machine when it adjusts to 95 or 98 percent what happens uh when the machine gets removed from the casino before the life of the machine let's say two months after it was installed um so good question most of the time the machine's not getting removed after two months of play um there's always there's always going to be, you know, it depends on the contract when the casino gets these machines. So most of the machines that are coming into casinos now are leased. Um, they're not, they're not owned by the casino. The casino is basically just renting the machine from the manufacturer. Um, if they take it out after two months, chances are it's because the machine was not performing well. When I say performing well, I'm not talking about the math. I'm not talking about, you know, the RTP or anything like that. When I say performance based, it's because people aren't liking the game or people aren't playing the game. Um, you got to think, you know, I don't know. I don't know if anybody out here is, uh, was ever a truck driver, but I know there's a saying with truck drivers. If the wheels aren't spinning, you're not making money. It's the same thing with slot machines. If the reels aren't spinning, you're not making money. If nobody's playing the game, if the game just isn't hitting or anything like that, the casino can call the manufacturer and be like, hey, people just aren't liking this game. Can we swap it out for something else? And in that case, the contract allows them to do that. So, um, you know, that that is something that it is allowed, but it's never done for reasons of RTP or payback or, you know, anything, anything remotely close to that. But very good question on that. Uh, we are approaching the end of our live stream here, so I'll take just a couple of uh, a couple of quick uh, quick questions, uh, and then we will go ahead and round out the live stream. I do want to mention just a couple more times, um, especially uh, when it comes to Facebook and TikTok, guys. We do not give away prizes or anything like that. We do not endorse any online casinos, anything like that. There's a lot of fake Facebook pages and especially TikTok pages. It's rampant out there, so please be careful. Just know that we're not getting, we're not giving away anything. So I'm telling you that right now. Um, and if you see one of those fake pages, please do report it. Help us out a little bit. Really do appreciate that. Um, also, guys, uh, too, one other thing. There is going to be a delay in live streams coming up. 
Uh, we probably are not going to have another live stream until probably mid April. Uh, so just to let you guys know, live streams are going to pause for just a little bit. Regular content is going to continue. We're still going to do daily shorts and our two videos a week. Um, but live streams, we're taking a brief pause from live streams for a little bit. Um, but when we come back, we're going to have, uh, hopefully I will have this room done. I'm going to try to redo this room a little bit, um, and try to, uh, reinvent the live stream a little bit. So, uh, just so you guys know, if you do have any questions that do pop up, please do always use our website. That is always a free resource for you guys. I can't stress that enough. And it's really awesome because if you, you can talk to other people in your area, find out what machines are at, what casinos, uh, you can even talk to people in other countries and see, you know, Hey, go onto the forum for Germany and ask them, Hey, what are your casinos like over there? You can do that. And it's all free to use. So check that out at our website. It's right there. Rope the jackpot.com forward slash chat. All right. Let's see what, uh, what other questions we got here. Uh, got here coming up here. Uh, is it easier to hit a hand pay on a low volatile machine or a high volatile machine? This is actually a pretty, it's a pretty ambiguous question, believe it or not, because it really depends on the bet amount. Um, are you betting high or low? If uh, I'll just say this. So like, if you're betting really high, I mean, really low volatile probably is going to be more consistent with the hand pays. You might get a few more hand pays on a low volatile machine. A uh, high volatile machine is probably going to be larger hand pays, um, but they're not going to be as frequent. But really, it depends on what are you betting, what are you playing. That's going to be the biggest um, the biggest factor when it comes to that. And Keith, thank you so much. We appreciate your knowledge and advice. I really do appreciate that, Keith. It makes uh, makes me feel good that I'm able to help you guys out, and uh, I hope that. Uh, all of you are being smart and playing safe out there every single time that you go to the casino. Uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and we are going to conclude tonight's live stream. Thank you all so much for joining. Really do appreciate it. As always, best of luck. Stay safe. And I will catch you again next episode. Take care, guys.